So how many of you would like to double your income in 2017? Only about half of you. That's interesting. How many of you didn't do quite as well in 2016 as you hoped you would have? Okay, that's fine. If you didn't do as well as you hoped, that's not a problem. You can do better in 2017. But let me explain something. If you didn't do quite as well as you wanted to do, the problem is not the local market and it's not the economy. Because, you know, people are selling property every market in the country, in every area, every day. Because there are people getting divorced need to sell their houses. There are people who have been downsized out of their companies that have to downsize their housing needs. There are people getting married. There are people who are passing away and their estates have to be sold. There are people relocating from one part of the country to the other. There are always properties being sold. So it's not the local market. It's not the economy. You have to get a better share of what's out there. And by the way, it's not your broker's fault. It's not your office's fault. There are companies all over the country that have a superstar or three or five superstars that are doing seven, eight, ten, fifteen million dollars a year in business, and there are three or four people starving. That's the reality in every real estate franchise, and every real estate office, and every real estate brokerage in the country. It's just the way things are. What really makes you stand out and gets you to the next level in your real estate career is what you put into it. And by the way, it's not the fault of your spouse or your ex-spouse, it's not your kid's fault, it's not the position of the moon and the stars, and it's not the three drinks you had at the bar last night. Yes, I saw you there. That is not the reason you didn't do as well as you'd like to have done in 2016. It's up to you to be successful. So we're going to go through some of the methods that you can take to get to that point. And by the way, you've probably seen this quote a dozen times, but insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. If you do the same thing year after year, you might do a little bit better one year over another because the economy might be a little better, because there might be more home sales one year over another. But the reality is if you want to build a consistent stream of income, you have to plan for that consistent stream of income. And if you want to grow your business, if you want to take it to the next level, if you want to double your income next year, there are four steps or four stages to taking your income to the next level. Step number one is to generate more prospects, more leads. That's a no-brainer, right? And that's what we're talking about today. Step two is to convert a greater percentage of those prospects, a greater percentage of those leads into working with you. How many of you here know what the percentage is of people who call on a property? Somebody calls in and says, I'm interested in a house at 123 Main Street. What percentage of those prospects actually buy a house within a year? Does anybody here know that? The answer, by the way, is 60%, 6 out of 10. Now, the average agent only converts about 4 out of 100. 4 out of 100, 4%. Superstars convert somewhere between 10 and 12%. And by the way, if you're converting 10 to 12%, you are tripling the business or almost tripling the business of the average agent just from incoming leads. So we need to be able to follow up with those leads, and we need to be able to convert more of them that come in. And once you get in front of a prospect, in front of a customer, in front of a potential client, you have to do a better job presenting yourself and showing them why you're the best to work with to list their property, why you're the best to work with to show them properties. And then you've got to follow up systematically because too many agents talk to a client once or twice and never follow up and that client toddles off and ends up working with somebody else somewhere else. And then, of course, you have to deliver exceptional service because if you deliver exceptional service, they're going to tell every friend, every relative, every coworker, everybody they know, don't call Doggy Breath Realty. Call Phil over at Century 21 or Joe over at Century 21, and you'll receive referrals, and that's going to grow your business over time. Those are the four steps to taking your career to the next level. There's nothing spectacularly uh, uh, difficult about it. It's a matter of putting it into the system and making it work. Now, we're going to talk about step one today, which is generating more leads. And there are four steps to generating more leads. How do you do it? Step one is to select who you're going to target as your clients, as your audience. You can go after expired listings. You can go after for sale by owners. You can hit a geographic area. You can hit a demographic group. You can go after your social network, your sphere of influence. And once you've decided what group you're going to target your message to, you've got to decide on your message. You've got to decide on your method of contact. Are you going to communicate with those people via mail? Are you going to send them postcards? Are you going to email to those people, do mass emails? Are you going to pick up the phone and call them? Are you going to send out newsletters? Are you going to communicate with them over social media? Or are you going to do what Brian Buffini says, which is drop by, just drop in and see them? 
And once you've done that, you've got to give your prospect something of value. That exponentially increases your business because if you're giving them something of value, they're far more likely to see you as a valuable partner in purchasing or selling a property, and they're more likely to work with you. And again, follow up consistently. Those are the steps, the stages to positioning yourself in a, in a way to generate leads. Now, if we want to look at our target market, there are literally hundreds of different methods you can go after, dozens of different uh, um, groups you can look at. You can uh, specialize in short sales. You can go after pre-foreclosure properties that are in Zillow. You can go after life events. We'll talk about one or two of those today. Uh, foreclosure companies, builders, uh, senior communities, demographic groups. There's just literally hundreds of different target audiences that you can identify. Now, I do want to start with your social network first because it's so powerful. And remember, we have only 30 minutes today, so we're going to go through this as quickly as we can. We know that uh, throughout the country, in every major market, 23% of all transactions that are done are going back to the same agent or the same company where they bought or sold a house previously. They are past clients of that business. 23%, almost one in four. 41% are referred by a friend, a relative, a neighbor, somebody who already likes and trusts you, your past clients. So 41% are referred to you by people who already like and trust you, and 23% are past clients coming back because, again, they like and trust you. That means that almost two-thirds of all transactions being done are with people that are already connected with you somehow. And it doesn't matter how much money you spend on Zillow, and by the way, yes, you can generate leads, on Zillow and some of these other social media, or some of these other sites and uh, uh, marketing programs that are very expensive, but two thirds of your business is still going to come as a result of people who already like and trust you. So we need to find a way to leverage that and increase what we're getting from that group since it's such a large percentage of our business. And by the way, the National Association of Realtors has broken this down into four different categories. First-time buyers, repeat buyers, first-time sellers, repeat sellers. If you look at this list, 52% of first-time buyers are referred by somebody who likes and trusts you already. You're still seeing about two-thirds of all buyers and sellers come to you as a result of somebody who already likes you. And by the way, <clears throat> if you're new in the business, that's okay. <clears throat> if you don't have any past clients, have there been agents who've left the company at some point in the past? Why don't you follow up with their clients? Go back through the files, go back through your multi-list and find all the people that worked as part of your organization that are no longer there. And pick up the phone and call them. Hi, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, this is Lauren from Central 21. How are you doing? The reason I'm calling is I want to apologize because according to our records, you sold a house through our office 37 years ago and the agent you worked with is no longer with our company. The reason I'm apologizing is because no one's been taking care of you from our office for quite some time. I just wanted to call and personally introduce myself and let you know if there's anything you ever need, we're here for you. By the way, one of the challenges we're running into these days that uh, we didn't anticipate is that people check us out online. Now remember, 64% of our clients are referred to us by someone who already likes and trusts us, or it's somebody using us that does already like and trust us, like a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, a uh, past client, and so on. 70% of those people that are referred to us go online to check us out before doing anything. And we're rolling out a program in about two weeks on online reputation techniques, how to build an online reputation and how to hopefully correct it if there's a problem. Because those people are going to Zillow, they're going to Yelp, they're going to Facebook, and they're looking you up to see what people had to say about you before they ever call you out. So if you have some negative feedback on there or you have no information on there at all, it's harder for uh, them to find you. So please take the time to try and get people to review you on Zillow, Post your, your uh, profile, everything you can about yourself on Zillow, on Realtor.com, on Yelp, on uh, Facebook, and get it out there. <clears throat> now, when I talk about Facebook, this is something that really shocked me. 71% of all adults you, in, in the um, uh, United States use Facebook on a daily basis. 71%. It's enormous. 
And by the way, this uh, uh, statistic comes from the Pew Research Center. I didn't make this up. However, I can tell you 72.7% of all statistics that a speaker uh, may, it says are actually made up on the spot by the speaker. Can you believe that? Anyway, Pew Research Center came up with a 71% of adults use Facebook on a daily basis. That's incredible. So what we want to do is we want to share with those people on Facebook your career and what you're doing to be successful. And the fact that you're in real estate, and I get pushback on this all the time. But Lauren, everybody knows what I do. I don't want to bother them. I don't want to. I don't want to look like a salesperson. I, I, I don't want to do that. Let me explain something. Everybody doesn't know what you do. All your friends, relatives. Let's put it a different way. How many of you out there have cousins that you're not sure what they do for a career? How about nieces and nephews? Anybody here there have some nieces and nephews that you're not sure what they're doing as a job or as a career? And if they said they're working at Pizza Hut, do you think they're still working there? Or if they said they're working in, let's say, real, to, real estate, do you know if they're still working in that industry? How about people that you went to high school with or people from your former career? Do they all know what you're doing right now? The truth is they really don't. Let me give you an example. Uh, this is Steve Trainer. He is a uh, Century 21 agent in the Lehigh Valley and Pocono market. Uh, Steve, uh, we put up a... a, a card on Facebook of uh, one of his properties for sale and he immediately got a response saying dude I didn't know you were a realtor now Steve by this point had been a realtor for seven years people don't remember what you do and when we post stuff like this it reminds people if nothing else that you're out there and what you do and by the way, when you want to create something like this, a nice card that has a Central Troy One sign, a picture of you, and a nice headline, you can go to photopea.com, P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A.com. It's a free service. Along the right-hand side, you can see where we layer uh, different uh, things on top of one another. So when you're creating a card, for example, you can take a picture or an image, and you can overlay on it a picture of you. You can overlay on it. Uh, a nice Century 21 symbol, put a headline across the top, and you've got something you can put on Facebook very nicely. Now, when I say this, I want to make sure you understand that part of the challenge is that people don't remember what you do necessarily. They remember sometimes the worst things about you. They remember the dumbest things you've done in life. And by the way, I've done every dumb thing I can possibly think of at least twice. So people remember me for some of the dumb things I've done, and they may not necessarily remember you being in real estate. So they, uh, you want to make sure that other than uh, what they uh, might have uh, thought of you in the past, that they remember you for something good as well. Now, this is another agent. Uh, this is a, a property in the Philadelphia area. Carol Colangelo uh, had a property that she put up for sale. We put an ad on Facebook with her name and contact information. And again, she immediately got a, uh, a response saying, I didn't know you were in real estate. I'm thinking about buying a house. Do you service the Philadelphia market? Carol, of course, said yes. This was on a Thursday. Uh, she went down and showed the person several houses on Sunday or Saturday. And uh, after showing, I think, five houses, ended up selling them a house for almost $350,000, 48 hours after a post that took five minutes to post. So if you're not doing this, why are you not doing this? And by the way, if you want to create something like this and you don't want to get into a software program like Photopea, uh, on 21 Online, there's the Business Builder program. There's a, a fill-in-the-blanks type thing where it'll load your photo, it'll load your contact information, and you can turn that into something that you can post on Facebook or elsewhere. And if you haven't seen Snipping Tool, any Windows device has a software program called Snipping Tool. It basically is a screenshot, but you can scale it down to whatever you're trying to copy save it as a photo, whatever happens to be on the screen, save it as a photo, and post that on uh, Facebook or wherever you'd like to. Now, if you are going to be posting stuff on social media, remember the rules. Rule number one, don't use social media purely to sell because you'll be ostracized and defriended very quickly. And rule number two is that social media is networking. It's sharing with others and building relationships that are valuable to all parties, not just a sales pitch. Rule number three is that it helps you to connect with people who can help you connect with others. Remember, we're not just trying to reconnect with our past clients, our friends, our sphere of influence, our social network. We want to grow that network. 
and we want to tap into and leverage the people that we already know that like and trust us and hopefully get them to share our information out to others. That's where we really take our business to the next level. And rule number four is to remain positive on social media activities. I know everybody likes to post stuff about the, uh, the election, but everybody's going to see that. And if you complain about someone, if you take a side, lots of people will see it or find out about it. And uh, sometimes it can negatively impact your business. Be the person you are, but also be the person that you should be in life. Now, when you're posting stuff on Facebook or social media sites, if you're trying to send stuff out on Instagram or post on Pinterest, you can do things that are direct marketing, and we'll go through a few of those. You can also do some indirect reminders, some things that are not necessarily in their face, but can hopefully remind them that you're in real estate and remind them that you need their help. And we'll go through a few of those real quickly. Here's one. How many of you have a Zap website so far? Okay, for those of you for your for those of you who have companies that have Zap websites, it's a fantastic tool. Each agent gets their own personal website. If you have one, pull up a listing, even if you don't have a listing of your own, pull up a listing of a house that you like. This happens to be uh, Warden and Green in uh, New Jersey. And click on the little F button above the picture and share that on your Facebook page. That way, if somebody clicks on it on Facebook, it takes them back to your personal website, not to Zillow, not to Realtor.com. It brings them back to your personal website at where they can hopefully search for properties. You want to keep showing them that you're doing something in real estate. And if you put up a couple of unique properties periodically, it reminds them of that. And it's also something that they're likely to click on. If you don't have a Zap site, you can always go to Central21.com and pull up a property that you might like. This is with Central 21 Alliance and Wildwood Crest. Uh, there is a share button uh, up in the top middle. If you share that, you can share that to a lot of different uh, services, including LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, of course. And again, it's coming from you. You're posting it. Another place you can pull listings from, when, sent, when you list a property with uh, our organization, it automatically creates a short video tour of the property on YouTube. YouTube is the second most searched website in the, uh, in the world. Click on that. Down at the bottom again, it says share. Share that again right back to your Facebook page, and it's going to show on Facebook. It's something that will uh, move when people are scrolling through Facebook. It's something that will hopefully give you some attention. And then one other thing I will mention, if you're not using this effectively, those of you who subscribe to Unique Property Websites, it's such a powerful tool. Um, we have it done, done automatically. It creates a, a full website on each property. And you're going to use this two ways. Number one, you're going to share it using Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or Pinterest onto your social media, and it brings them back to your unique property website rather than to Zillow or Realtor.com. Stop using those services that sell your information to somebody else and sell your leads to somebody else. Bring them back to a site that you're paying for. The second benefit to a unique property website is you can utilize that to rank higher on Google that people can find you easier. But what I really want to point out is how to leverage your relationship with your sellers. So you're going to call your seller and then you're going to email them. And you're going to say, listen, as a part of my marketing campaign, I've built a whole website about your property. And because I've built a whole website about your property, I want to make sure that it's everywhere we possibly can get it because we never know where a buyer is going to come from. So one of the things we're going to do with this is we're going to use Google Remarketer and we're going to track people who are looking for properties in your area and we're going to push this unique property website on your property to their news feeds, to their Facebook page if we can, to their uh, when they look at uh, news and other sources online. But the second thing we're doing is we're posting it on all the, so all the social media sites. So if you, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, each have your own Facebook page. Would you do me a favor? I know you want to get the house sold. We do too. Can you post uh, this uh, unique property website on your Facebook page as well? And by the way, they will absolutely do that. And you're now showing your information to their network of friends, their sphere of influence, their social network. And many of those people that are connected to them, remember 6% of the population has their house in the market at any given point in time. So those people who are connected to them that have their house or property listed with XLAX Realtors, the ones with diarrhea of the mouth, 
the ones who have their properties listed with Doggy Breath Realty that haven't heard from their agent in the last three months see that you're not just marketing a property, you've actually built a whole website for their friend's property and then when that property expires they're more likely to give you a call because you're doing something differently. And of course uh, we're uh, running low on time but you can also buy targeted ads in uh, Facebook and other social media sites and we'll talk a little bit about that. But if you are going to do targeted ads, rather than do a generic image ad that says call me to sell your property, give them some reason to call like the top five improvements you must make if you're going to sell your home this year click for details or find out how you can buy a house with zero down those are targeted ads we don't have time to go through exactly how to put them together but we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute and you can also uh, flying under the radar a little bit share blog posts uh, Century 21 has got a great uh, blog site just Google Century 21 blog and you'll find lots of articles like how to decorate for outdoor entertaining, five projects to complete in 10 minutes or less, uh, seven ways to combat clutter in the new year. And just click on whichever one you like and uh, share it to your Facebook page. And it's something that people will see. They'll, uh, they'll share themselves. You can also do some under the radar type uh, marketing, some reminders that you're in the real estate business that you need their help. So, for example, you might put on some subtle posts uh, periodically that remind them that you're out there like hey I'm showing investment properties to an out-of-state investor today please wish me luck that reminds me you're in real estate it also shows them that you work with investors one of our agents Peter Parker at Central 21 Webs and Swingers had a client today that was looking for a nice ranch in the Parkland School District he said he was really struggling to find something for sale and I didn't realize there were so few in the market so if you know of anybody thinking of selling one please let me know and uh, hey friends, long day, I spent over five hours showing homes to a relocation buyer today. Some of the homes are really poorly staged. It is so important to make your first impression your best possible impression. I had to bite my tongue a few times because I would really have liked to give the owner some advice on how to make the home show better, but that would be stepping over the line since I'm not representing them. I'm surprised more realtors don't take the time to educate their clients on staging. These are subtle posts that aren't overtly saying, hey, I need your help. You can also have a little bit of fun with it. You can post things like, uh, when I die, I want to go peacefully like my last real estate broker did, in his sleep, not screaming like the clients in his car did. Or, of course, Marion Pearson's quote, behind every successful man is a surprised woman. You can have a lot of fun with it. We also try posting some things with humor that actually have the symbol directly in it. Um, prehistoric Googling, and by the way, if you don't want to use a prehistoric home search, don't check out Zillow. Check out the Zap tool, the best home search available. Uh, regret, those were the droids I was looking for, and I didn't buy a house in 2016 when the rates were so low, I should have called Century 21. Or it appears now is the perfect time to buy, should I call Century 21? Or get Century 21 on the phone, buy every investment property you can and do it now. You want to try and do something that's going to make you stand out, that people are going to share, that people are going to have fun with, but still reminds them that you're out there and in the business. If you're in an area that has uh, historic photos, you can Google historic photos of your town, historic uh, Camden, historic Allentown, historic whatever. Uh, take some of those photos. You can even put a little symbol on the bottom if you want to. Share them on your page and say, uh, what do you think about this photo from 1941? Get people talking, start a conversation, start a discussion. Now we talked about social media. That's a way of communicating. That's a way of uh, getting in touch with friends, relatives, past clients, and communicating with them. What's another way to build business? Well, we can talk about postcards. And that, what I get from that is nobody does postcards anymore. Are you kidding? You know, postcards are starting to work again. You know why? Because nobody does postcards anymore. That's a reality. You send a postcard out about a property that you've sold. And, of course, uh, one spouse looks at the other and says, Honey, that house down the street finally sold. What do you think they got for it? And you start a conversation in their house, and they know that you sold it, especially if it was listed with Doggy Breath Realty for six months before you sold it, and you sold it in a day and a half. So you can do a nice professional card like this. You can get that out. Vista Print sends them out very inexpensively. There are lots of services that do it. You can also have a little bit of fun with it. You can try doing something a little different. Uh, your neighbors at 822 Fawnview Road got exactly what they deserved last night, and you could be next. Yes, this might not be the most professional uh, card out there. It does not have a Century 21 symbol on it, but our goal is to have your message read and to get people to come back to you. So your neighbors got exactly what they deserved last night, and you could be next. Yes, people are going to read the card. They're going to turn it over. And on the back, it's going to say that they sold their home at a great price because they hired Century 21 to market it. 
And by the way, don't do anything until you read our free report, the nine deadly mistakes homemaker, home sellers make that cost them thousands of dollars when selling their home and how to avoid them. This report, prepared by industry insiders, will help you to sell for top dollar in the shortest amount of time. For your free copy, call and ask for Penny by name. It's a great uh, tool to try and get people in. And by the way, we've done this as well uh, without putting anything in the back. Uh, you get the front of the card. People are curious what happened to the neighbors. It sounds like something terrible happened. And on the back, we've tested to find out what happened to your neighbors, John and Sally Smith, and what could happen to you next. Call this toll-free number and listen to the recorded message. Now, we tested this the first time with 40 houses. We set up a voice mailbox out of Wisconsin because they don't block any caller ID. And out of 40 houses that we sent the card to, 39 of them played the message because everybody wants to know. They get curious. They want to hear it. And they actually listen to your message. And by the way, 39 out of 40 played the message, and several of them played it more than once. It's one way to attract attention. You can do the same thing with uh, door hangers. You can put those out. It's a less expensive way. Uh, 500 of them right now are $69 in Vistaprint. You can pick them up and take them out to a neighborhood or an area. Another uh, method of contact is uh, creating a campaign for life events, a wedding event, a new baby event, a death in the family, or divorce. We're going to hit divorce as an example. Some divorce statistics. 1.2 million couples file for divorce every year. That's in the United States. 61% of them will list their home for sale. That's 732,000 listings each year just from divorce. So how do we tap into that market? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is try and create an article about uh, selling your home in a divorce. And if you Google selling your home in a divorce, you'll find five or six or seven articles about it. Try and take the information you have that you can read and... Um, rewrite it somehow to make three or four or five paragraphs out of it and then you're going to put this on your website how do you put it on your website because you're going to have to have a place for people to go to get information so you find out what you can and then you go to 21 online and down in the tool library you click on my c21 site now remember if you have zap sites it's a different system than the zap site and uh, at some point these are going to be put together and you're going to have local content pages on your zap sites if you have zap but at the moment uh, my c21 sites do allow you to create something called local content so under local content you're going to put in uh, a page here you go add new content page uh, and you're going to plug in your article that you've just written or your several paragraphs about divorce and it's going to create a unique URL that might be yourname.com slash divorce uh, selling. And you've got something to refer back to. Now you've got to do something with that web address. So the next step you're going to do is you're going to create a Facebook page. Not Facebook page, I'm sorry, Facebook ad. And you're going to target that Facebook ad to the zip codes that you're working in. And you're going to try and figure out how you're going to identify the people who are getting divorced or thinking about divorce. One way is to um, do a keyword search of anybody saying separation or divorce. But one of the other ways you can try and target it is try and uh, set it up so that anybody who changes their status from married to it's complicated is probably a really good target for somebody who is probably right now going through a pending divorce. And by the way, you can do the same thing on Google Remarketer. You can buy AdWords or Google AdWords to try and uh, purchase uh, those in your area for certain zip codes. People searching uh, those key terms, getting divorced and selling your home or getting divorced and your housing needs and so on. You can also do a quick YouTube video basically reading your article and talking about it that hopefully leads them back to you as well. And then on the physical side of the world, you can contact divorce attorneys and say, listen, I'm a specialist that handles divorce. You can even create a postcard and hit divorce attorneys over and over again to remind them that you're the person to, to refer business to because many attorneys do refer business. So we've got a, a target market here. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, veterans. That's another target audience. Let's say you want to go after the veterans market. Uh, you, again, create a, an article or a couple of articles about how to buy a property uh, with zero down payment using a VA loan, uh, understanding the needs of VA buyers. Go back to your MyC21 site, create a uh, content page or multiple content pages for veterans, 
and then create uh, some way of contacting those. You can create a Facebook ad where you pay per click for people who are veterans or are military families and get your message in front of them, lead them back to your page on your MyC21 site. You can do the same thing with Google Remarketer. You can create a couple of quick YouTube videos on how to uh, buy or sell a property if you're a veteran, some of the benefits that are available to buying or selling a property when you're a veteran. You can go to veterans events. You can buy a mailing list for veterans in your area and create a postcard that goes out to try and show them that you're the person to contact. A couple of last minute things because we're running out of time. Let's talk a little bit about expired and for sale by owner campaigns. And by the way, these campaigns work for both. You can use them for either one. Uh, one method of expired campaign is what we call the personal postcard. When a property expires, they've got a picture of the house on uh, the multi-list. Pull that picture up and again go to photopia.com and you're going to add your picture, your Century 21 symbol, and a nice headline. You've created a postcard. Then you want to print that. Uh, if you don't know how to print a postcard, you can go to avery.com, A-V-E-R-Y.com. They've got free software that will allow you to print postcards out of your color printer. You create something and you send it out to them. You do this very quickly in the morning so that when they're getting those 50 or 60 or 70 letters from every realtor in town that all say exactly the same thing, they're getting this postcard that has their house on it. And again, it shows them that you're doing something differently than other people do. Another campaign we use very successfully is what I call the pre-crumpled letter uh, campaign. And let me explain it this way. You want to make yourself stand out. So you write a letter, you, or I should say the headline of every uh, message you send out is 85% of what they read. So we print across the top of the page, about a third of the page, this letter has been pre-crumpled for your convenience. And you do put in the letter that the listing agreement with their current realtor has expired. But by the time you read that letter, they'll have heard from dozens of real estate agents all claiming to be the best in the marketplace and all making all sorts of promises to get people to list with them. In order for me to stand out when I'm competing with 2,400 realtors in my market, I've got to be a little different than other agents. I've got to have a different marketing approach. And I think I've established that I'm different than other realtors. Now, you're competing against 3,700 other properties in your marketplace for sale for those few buyers that are out there. So we have to make your house stand out as well. And we're going to do that using some unique tools and techniques, just like I make myself stand out. We're going to find a way to help you stand out as well. And we take that letter, we crumple it into a ball, we flat, I'm not kidding, we flatten it back out, we put it in an envelope, and we handwrite the address in the envelope because you're four times as likely to open an envelope if it's handwritten than if it's a pre-printed label. And you put an actual stamp on it, and you mail it out. It crinkles, people uh, see the handwritten letter, they feel the crinkle, they open it up, some of them get a chuckle out of it, it does make them think about you, and hopefully they're going to contact you. Another way of doing this is uh, what we call the needle in the haystack box. You can go buy cake boxes. We buy them for about 30, 35 cents a piece in bulk. They're small little boxes. You fill it with hay, or you can fill it with uh, that grass you get around uh, Easter time. Put a little bit of that in. Put your business card in there, and you're going to attach to your business card. You're going to punch a hole in it. You're going to take some yarn, and you're going to attach one of those plastic needles you get at Walmart or Target or other fine retailers for, you know, 100 of them for like 10 bucks. You stick the needle in, you stick the card on top, and you have a little uh, note inside that explains how you work. And then across the box, you write, finding good real estate agent is like finding a needle in a haystack. I know this is corny, but by the way, corn sells. So the goal is to try and get them to contact you and, and stand outside, be outside the box. So they open up the box. They see your card in there. Of course, your card is uh, you are the needle in the haystack. And again, you write something in it that says there are many realtors in the area uh, that we're competing against, and we have to make ourselves stand out. To be successful, I need to make myself stand out from all the others, and I think I've proven I can do that. There are many homes competing for buyers in this market. The agent who will sell your home needs to be aggressive in marketing and help you to differentiate your property and make it stand out, and I can do that too. Now, the challenge with this is you're going to have to take these boxes, you're going to have to put them on people's porches in the morning and get them in front of people, and that uh, takes some time and some effort. You can also take out a plastic bag in the morning. We've had agents 
who have had uh, uh, a headline put in a plastic bag, the same kind you get for a newspaper, hanging on the door about 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning. By the way, this does not work for night people. It only works for morning people. Uh, about 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, before they go to work, you hang a bag on the door that says, did you know your home is no longer on the market for sale? That sticks out so that they see it when they open the door. And then you've got other information on you. They take that to the office. They don't realize their house has gone off the market because, of course, they haven't talked to their agent in the last three months. So they didn't realize it expired. Hopefully they call you before they get those 50, 60, 70 letters and before they get the 25 phone calls from realtors. You can also do a series of postcards. That's effective because it's not just one letter. Uh, create a series of postcards that go out to them every two or three days for a week, week and a half. And again, that's going to make you stand out when you're trying to list either an expired or for sale by owner to stay in front of them. And we're kind of out of time, so you can always pick up the phone, of course. And by the way, if you're picking up the phone and calling expired listings or for sale by owners, you might want to try calling their cell phone. And you can get that very often by going to intellius.com, I-N-T-E-L-I-U-S.com. That is a subscription service. I think it's 29 bucks a month. But it allows you to find people's cell phone numbers. It sometimes allows you to find their email address as well. But, of course, it's more effective to call them on the phone. And then we do have a script here, but uh, time is way too short, so we'll skip over that so we can get through a couple more things. And a for sale by owner survival package. You can always call for sale by owners and say, listen, um, you're in my market area. I know you're trying to sell on your own, and I wish you luck with that, but I do come across buyers for homes like yours. Would you cooperate with me if I brought a buyer to your house? And most of the time they're going to say, sure, I'll be happy to pay you 3% or 2.5% or whatever it is. That sounds great. Would you mind if I stopped by and took a quick look at your house so I can talk about it to buyers? I can be there at 7 tonight, or would tomorrow be more convenient? You go over and take a look at the property. And you let them know that you can help them with one thing at no charge. You'll be happy to drop off what we call for sell by owner survival package with all the forms they might need to sell the house. And uh, you stop back. That gives you a second contact with them with a package of all sorts of stuff that scares the daylights out of them. And give that to them as a, uh, as a token of good faith. And at some point, they're hopefully going to list their property with you. You can also hold workshops and seminars. You can set yourself apart as the expert to hold workshops and subjects that would interest the target audience. You're seen as the expert in the field. And by the way, you can set these up at the local library, uh, local community center. Uh, we've done this with hospitals and large businesses. You know, personnel directors are always looking to try and have uh, people come in and give value, give benefits to their employees, to their staff. So you talk to the local hospital and you tell them you're going to put on a workshop for free about how to invest in real estate, how to diversify your, your retirement portfolio by investing in real estate. Very often the personnel director is more than happy to set that up for you, give you a room and promote it, and you might pick up some clients that way. And it's another uh, thing you can do to try and build business. You can do workshops on veterans loans, uh, on transitioning from your home to senior living. Uh, we had an agent who was going to assist living facilities and setting up uh, workshops, which the assisted living facility liked because it brought people in to see their facility. They talked just about transitioning, getting your home sold, uh, downsizing, and, and moving into an assisted living or senior housing. That's a target audience. You can do workshops on that. Uh, investing in real estate, financing strategies, and so much more. And remember, when you're doing a workshop, you're delivering information. You're not selling. You're giving advice. You're becoming the expert. And you can also take uh, what we call shot-in-the-dark calls. Pick up the phone and start calling people. Uh, this is a, a script that was used by an agent in our company that did very, very well with it. Uh, obviously, his name was not really Ron Weasley, but hi, Mr. Dumbledore. This is Ron Weasley calling from Century 21 Hogwarts. I work specifically with real estate investors, and there's one thing I've learned. All of them are either looking to add to their portfolio if they find a good buy, or they're looking to start liquidating. Uh, are you looking to buy or sell property? And that particular agent uh, started in late March, and by the end of the year, in only nine months, he had done $4 million in transactions from only 30 days of calling investors. And he only picked one zip code, only picked uh, properties that were two to four units where the owner did not live at the property, and that's all he called. That's what he did. Um, there are lots of different calls you can make. Uh, another idea might be to walk into larger employers in your area and find out who handles human resources and then introduce yourself as someone who can help with relocation services. And by the way, you can join networking organizations. If you've never done this before, Latip 
or BNI are both organizations that are like a chamber of commerce, but they only allow one person to join from each business category, one realtor, one HVAC person, one banker. And everybody gets together and tries to help them grow each other's businesses. Very effective method of building your business over time. And you can also do video campaigns. I'll end here today, but with video campaigns, you can create videos on uh, neighborhoods or on a town. Not long videos. I'm talking about taking some still photos or some iPhone video, plugging it together and creating a 30, 60, 90 second piece on uh, uh, Newark, New Jersey, or whatever town you want to do and put that together very quickly and then have a tag at the end. By the way, if you're thinking about moving to this area, to Wildwood Crest, New Jersey, please call me. I'm the realtor who will help you. And so on. Get that out on YouTube because, again, YouTube is the second most visited site on the web. And when you're Googling, let's say, Wildwood Crest, you're going to get a lot of hotels that come up. But you're also going to see videos pop up very high in ranking because YouTube ranks so high on uh, Google searches. Again, thank you very much for uh, having me here today, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to stay.